So the PS5 DualSense Edge is a great controller with many features. So today we're going to explore the DualSense Edge trigger sensitivity. Let's talk about it. What's going on you wonderful people? I'm Brandon and welcome to Creighton TV. First, let's talk about what the PS5 DualSense Edge trigger sensitivity is and why it's a game changer. The DualSense controller adaptive triggers allow developers to create unique in-game experience by adjusting the resistance of the triggers. This means that you can feel the tension of your actions, like pulling back a bowstring or hitting the brakes in a racing game. So now let's discuss how to access and adjust your trigger sensitivity on your PS5 DualSense controller. To do so, all you have to do is follow these simple steps. So there's two ways to access the DualSense Edge trigger sensitivities. The first way I'm gonna show you right here is on the PS5 home screen. You wanna go to your settings, click settings, scroll down to accessories, click on the DualSense Edge wireless controller. Then you wanna go over to custom profiles and then you can create a custom profile, but you know, or you can just work with one that you already have set up. From there, you wanna click on your profile that you ever have, go down to where it says trigger dead zone. And this is how you work the trigger sensitivity on the PS5 DualSense Edge controller. And then at the top, it says apply the same settings for uh, L2 and R2. So if you don't wanna move both of them, this little toggle switch up here at the top, just toggle that on and it does change both of them for L2 and R2. Like I say, if I put 16, now it lets you know the trigger effect for both L2 and R2 might not work properly because this input range is limited. So keep that in mind. So wherever you adjust your trigger sensitivities to, just keep in mind that, you know, for the certain aspects of trigger sensitivities, they may not work because it's, uh, you changed your levels. So it all just depends on what games you are playing and how, or how you want the feedback to feel. Um, you can swap back and forth from L2 to r2 and let it know so i can change my ranges from i can go all the way to like say i wanted 30 all the way down to like 60 or something just to have like a you know constant middle so anything that's outside the white action figure where, where you see like the trigger is like um, at, i'm pulling down the trigger and it's not like really showing nothing until it gets the blue all this right here is not activated when you get here in the blue and you see this this is activated this is activated, not activated. So if you can pull the full sense and you're only gonna be activated for like the middle between 30 and 60. Yeah, but you, you can also do that. Then from there, if you wanna test it out, you wanna go back and hit the function button and the menu button to go back to your game. Yeah, trust me, when I say like if I did zero to 50, so anything from zero to 49, there's no, there's no, there's no feedback. So if I only wanted half of my controller, all this, as you see, is rising, is no feedback. There's no, the controller will not activate at all until you give it the full press and then it gives. So I have tried some games like that and it felt very weird and awkward. If you want to mess with the trigger sensitivity and find your trigger sensitivity, just play around with it and see what games you like best for you. Me personally, I'm gonna keep it zero to 100 because I want my triggers to have the full action feedback back and forth, no matter what so now the, the simpler way to access the trigger sensitivity on the ps5 dual sense edge is you want to come down here on your controller and both of these down here are your function buttons press the function button press the menu button same time it brings up your sensitivity for controllers that way you can it brings up the custom profiles that way you'll be able to change your thumbstick sensitivity or your trigger sensitivity so with the triggers being there you want to create custom profiles you want to just click on one to set a profile, you just press the function button and whatever face button here. So like for me, the default is function and triangle. And then I have function and circle for my Fortnite. So if I wanted to make another one, I will go in here, and create a profile, and then I'll push the function button in like X or function button in square, stuff like that. Remember, when it comes to finding the perfect trigger sensitivity, it may take some trial and error. So don't be afraid to experiment and find out what works best for you. So yes, I'm showing you just how the trigger sensitivity works. I did put on function from zero to, uh, had it from zero to 100. Mine, I now changed it from 50 to 100. So the first input from zero 49 will not be activated. And you can see I am playing with my triggers stops all the way down. So my trigger stops are all the way down. And if you put them um, all the way up, you'll have more function, but you see how mine only goes down halfway. Full function goes down all the way, so. So now if I wanted to create a custom profile while I'm in right now, 
Um, I switched it back, so if I wanted to hit F8 in circle, I'm back on my Fortnite profile. So now if I wanted to try like GTA, uh, Grand, Grand Turismo 7. So what I'll have to do is create a custom profile. You can name it to whatever you want. We'll just say test. You know, name it for that. And then this is where you can be able to create your stick sensitivity. You can do custom buttons to where you want your layout and stuff like that. So you can change the layout of the controller, which is pretty good. Uh, stick sensitivity. I did do a video on this. So if you want to find out the perfect sensitivity for your dual sense edge, make sure you watch this video that's up here or at the end of this video or in the pinned comment. But the trigger sensitivity is what we're going to be going to. Vibration, you always want to make sure you turn that off. Trigger effect, you want to keep that strong, standard. That's why I leave it on. But triggers uh, dead zone. So now we're on here, so I can change both of them. And you'll see my input. So right now, if you look at the back of my controller, I have one of the little notches on the medium and the other one all the way up. So this is full input. And so now you know how the PS5 DualSense Edge trigger sensitivity works. You know how to access it. You know how to adjust your settings to enhance your gaming experience. So if this video was very helpful for you, go ahead and smash the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to Creighton TV for more awesome tech content. So make sure now you watch this video here so you can learn all about the PS5 DualSense Edge thumbstick sensitivity and how that works. So if you watch that video over there, as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Game on and God bless. Peace.